the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay Pray in the Spirit for one minute. Father, our hearts are open to receive. Grant us grace. We have come to learn, we have come to be built. Are you praying? The entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It always is a joy to welcome and honor everyone here great and small alike this is the house of god this is koinonia and um, we've been on a series the series is aimed at helping us to become effective kingdom ambassadors and we call the series witnesses we considered part one last week just a quick recap and then we begin to build tonight as we prepare to pray hallelujah we did establish last week that believers are classified according to scripture in two ways two categories basically there is the classification that is based on identification and there is the classification that is based on function that the bible lets us know that we are one with christ for instance it reveals to us the implication of our oneness our ability to be one with christ and then the bible also lets us know that every privilege in this kingdom comes with responsibilities so it calls us kings fruit bearers light salt priests a chosen people a royal priesthood and then in acts chapter 1 and verse 8 he calls us witnesses we establish that a witness is a validator of a claim please pay attention our online family pay attention the word of god is being taught now a witness is one who has knowledge about a matter a witness is one who is able to provide a testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know and we said that every witness has a responsibility of providing an evidence and evidence is a token of truthfulness it is used as an instrument of validation a token an evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact hallelujah then we began to talk about the making of witnesses we spoke a bit about how witnesses are made that believers do not just become witnesses in experience by default there is a season and there is a pathway that every believer should follow must follow and we'll take it from there tonight matthew chapter 4 and verse 19 we have a long journey and we obtain grace from god to do justice to this series if you're in agreement you may say amen, amen. matthew 4 and verse 19 and he said to them the he being jesus follow me and i will make you follow me and i will make you so god is a maker of men but he only makes those who follow your assignment in the making of a witness is to be an effective follower praise the name of the lord an effective follower now please look up in making in building a believer to become a witness there is a system of growth and a system of building that that believer must submit to to be holistically built to stature 
enough to represent the purposes of the kingdom please listen it is important if you want to be used by god being available is wonderful but not sufficient you must be available and usable again available and usable to be available means you are yielded you are ready to serve his purposes to be yielded means you have been trained and equipped so here's how it works when god finds a man he calls that man your calling is not to ministry your calling is not to serve the purposes of god your calling is to god every time god called men he mandated that they follow him it is when you are sent that you are sent as a witness you are not called as a witness you are called as a follower a disciple are we together now just because you are called does not mean you are sent there are many people who are called but they are not yet sent you your call can be genuine but you can send yourself into perdition into perils into failure hallelujah there is a spiritual system by which witnesses are trained and are built and we must learn how to submit ourselves to that system of making it's a painful process and it's a process that requires that you obtain staying power from god you must remain until the dealing is finished listen if you jump the school of the spirit if you jump classes in the school of the spirit the class that you jump you will pay for it with your failure in the future in the secular you can jump classes and read up during an exam and just write and pass but in the school of the spirit every class has a destiny implication and you must submit yourself one class can take you two weeks to complete another class can take you five years to complete are we blessed tonight the throne room gives us a picture of how things happen in heaven and everything in heaven as you know by now reflects God and different dimensions of him everything in heaven is a reflection of the glory of God the angels the living creatures the elders the splendor the excellence everything in heaven speaks of the glory of God and it's interesting that among the many features in heaven are a set of beings that the Bible calls the four living creatures have you read that in scripture for a long time I wondered what those guys were doing in heaven there I presume that there may be a class of angels or cherubs as one of the accounts let us know that they are a class of cherubims but what they are there for exactly I didn't understand for a very long time Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1 contained in the mystery of the four living creatures is the course curriculum of the training of witnesses if you understand the mystery of these creatures that stand before God then you will know how to stand before God as a faithful witness there is no record that the witnesses sit they always stand before God they present themselves before God Revelation chapter 4 please we'll read verse 1 down to 7 please pay attention after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking to me which said come up hither and I will show you the things that must be after we're reading to 7 verse 2 immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat upon the throne three and he that sat was to look upon like jasper and sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald he's describing the throne now and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats i saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold verse five now and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices 
and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which were the seven spirits of god verse six now and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind seven the first of that beast or that creature was like a lion pay attention john is describing his sight now and the second beast was like a calf and the third beast had the face as a man and the fourth beast was a flying eagle ezekiel in chapter one had the same experience even though his description you know there was a little difference but basically he was talking about what we have come to know as the four living creatures these four scriptures these four living creatures were very they were they were interesting creatures and for a long time it bothered me what would these kinds of supposedly ugly creatures be doing before god i thought there should be better creatures that should be looking at god the elders were not even before him but these four creatures having the face of a lion for one having the face of a calf for the other having the face of a man and then having the face of a flying eagle and then i would later learn that those four living creatures represent the different dimensions that every believer must pass through in order to attain stature and maturity those four living creatures represent the school of the spirit these are the dimensions that you must be trained in to be able to stand before god as a living witness and as a man of stature we are talking about the making of witnesses number one the face of the lion the lion here very quickly talks about dominion and royalty the bible calls the lion the king among the animals that move on land are we together now we'll just touch on it quickly and then we'll go to the core area we're dealing with tonight lion talks of dominion talks of power talks of splendor so when you begin your dealing in the school of the spirit listen carefully you are exposed to your right in christ you are exposed to your authority in christ you get to understand that you are not a non-entity that you've been raised up with christ according to paul's gospel in ephesians that you have been made to sit with him you understand that you have exousia capacity to legislate on behalf of the parliament of heaven that is the face of the lion the training that cultures you into an understanding of dominion every believer who wants to be used by god as a witness you must be able to understand the dimension of the training that is represented in the face of a lion you must know who you are in christ you must know that you are not a victim of situations and circumstances that you have been exalted raised up with christ the bible says but if all you know is that you have been exalted in christ you have been raised if that is all the dimensions you know it will come with a side effect the side effect is pride the awareness of the kind of privilege and the kind of honor that god has given to you and just leaving it like that will end you in pride and in arrogance so there are several people i know who i am and you are right but then you are wrong eventually because they do not know that authority in the kingdom has a purpose authority without a purpose would lead to destruction you cannot invest so much power to men and women are not connected to purpose it is dangerous to empower people without giving them a purpose so the face of the second creature the calf luke chapter 22 for sake of time we'll read from verse 25 to 27 he lets you know the face of a calf talks of servanthood a calf or an ox was used to plow the land now when he teaches you that you are mighty you are a king you are a priest you're not a non-entity then he lets you know that the purpose of that authority is for service 
authority is not for self-aggrandizement it's not for usurping people it's not for subjugating people it's to be a servant and to serve the purposes of the kingdom luke 22 please give us from verse 25 it says and he said unto them the kings of the gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors 26 now it says but ye shall not be so but he that is greatest among you he will prove his greatness by being the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve 27 for whether is greater he that seated at meat or he that serveth is not he that seated at meat but i am among you jesus said as he that serves everybody please say after me the purpose of authority is for service there are many believers with an imbalance of the idea of dominion we are obsessed with dominion but then that consciousness still destroys us because we do not know that the purpose of dominion and authority in the kingdom is for service if the only thing you know is the face of the lion you are in error the imbalance that comes with the face of the lion is corrected by the face of the calf so while i know that i'm a great man i am anointed I'm, I, I have power i have dominion i'm seated with christ living that believer like that will lead to imbalance it will lead to pride like it's happening to many people in ministry in business etc so he lets you know that you are a servant that the reason why he gave you money he gave you influence he gave you a ministry is to have the privilege and the honor of serving god's people ladies and gentlemen believers listen you cannot tell the kind of honor and joy in my heart every week and every time i have the privilege the rare privilege of serving you the truth of god's word I have been doing this for many years and yet every week it is a privilege it is for this cause that i travel around the nations i travel around this nation and regardless of how stressful it is i am motivated by the fact that as we continue to walk in the consciousness of this authority this dominion power we realize that just being a king without service makes you a wicked king and an irresponsible king God demonstrated that he was king by showing us that he was Lord of the universe. But he came down and he served. If all you have is authority and dominion and you do not have the heart of a servant, you will not go far as far as being a witness is concerned. This is a principle that is true for ministry. It's a principle that is true for business. It's a principle that is true for government. The purpose of power is service. If you are unwilling to serve, there is no need looking for power. Are we together? The face of an ox. But then, like the lion, just knowing that you are a servant alone has its own side effect. The side effect is that you can serve and serve and men can take advantage of you because of your humility. People will use you people will take advantage of you for their selfish reasons and then he introduces the third phase that gives you balance that even though you are a servant with so passionate love for people you are human the face of a man are we together now the third phase lets you know it speaks about your humanity john chapter 11 and verse 35 the bible is not afraid to show us the humanity of jesus read with me interesting simple but very deep ready to read one two go change jesus to life ready one to read resurrection wept the word of god wept it is powerful to know that when he walked upon the earth as a man he was not a superhuman he was hungry and he let us know he was hungry he cursed a tree because he wasted his time 
and did not give him food the humanity of men follow me you are a lion you have dominion you are one with christ why have i been given that authority the authority is given for service but whilst you serve you live in a world of men that is mad with selfishness they will walk you out they will kill you if need be so he teaches you that whilst it is true you are a servant you are human it is okay to cry hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15 please are we learning something already hebrews 4 and verse 15 for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity this is my definition of compassion compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity the bible says but he was in all points tempted like us yet without sin so jesus was a man hebrews chapter 2 from verse 16 hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16 please it says for verily he looked not on him he took not on him the nature of angels but took on him the seed of abraham that means he came as a man wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to god to make reconciliation for the sin of the people last verse for in that himself had suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted listen your humanity is an advantage it lets people to appreciate the all-surpassing power of god in you you know for a very long time in the body of christ especially it has looked like an embarrassment for anointed people to reveal their human nature and members are very wonderful but interesting people because they can look at you and say i can't believe it you are eating swallow and you feel guilty for being human i said no 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 i just uh, decided to break my fast of 500 days just for one day so i'll continue what in the world is wrong with saying i am hungry honestly hungry while serving his purposes and now they wake you up by two or three and say wow i'm disappointed why should i be sleeping and you're sleeping too and you feel guilty you apologize for sleeping many people have paid the price for strangling away their humanity jesus wept jesus was hungry jesus grew jesus was pained many people love jesus because they don't know he was once human do you know why those who lived in his days hated him because he expressed his humanity very seriously he entered the temple one time and he saw people exchanging and they were making money from the house of god he did not go to the roman government to say look i am I'm, I'm zealous i came from heaven are you aware of that the bible says he was angry he didn't say he was laughing and say wow i see uh -uh, the zeal of the lord ate him up and he took a whip and whipped them hallelujah your humanity is a blessing it makes people to be able to see you and know that truly there is an earthen vessel it is the excellency of the power that is of god your humanity will give you balance you know i've shared my story here very very funny years ago i used to feel guilty people would tell me remember apostle you were sent to us you told us that god sent you to us and i would feel guilty sometimes tired and sleepy and people will sleep they will rest they will refresh then they will come and meet me and say look i need counseling i need this and i've told them god sent me to them so one day this deliverer let me tell you where my deliverance happened i entered a catholic church and you know they have a crucifix there and the lord asked me to look at that crucifix i looked at it with passion and for the first time i truly realized that it was not me that died on that cross i am only a witness let me i will give you a scriptural proof of what i'm saying john chapter one please give us from verse six john chapter one this is a deliverance for us there was a man even though he was sent from god when he arrived the earth he was a man and his name was john 
7 the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his effective witness might believe here is a deliverance verse 8 he was not that light but was sent to bear witness to that light yes sir you are not jesus christ you are not the king of glory you are one with him your dominion is shared dominion not absolute dominion please hear me when you are tired rest when you are hungry eat when you are pain cry when you are happy rejoice the face of a man is also in the throne room please sit down there are preachers who have gone through all kinds of things bereavements issues with their families and people look at them as though it's a sin to be human and when you see the man of God crying in his office what is happening and he says you cannot imagine we need one billion five billion to complete this project I don't even know where it's coming from I am overwhelmed and here you you hear religious people I'm disappointed have you forgotten that God is still God uh, is he not no 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 when people cry don't be too quick to stop them Jesus well he didn't forget he was God when he was crying. Jesus had to query his father. Eloi, Eloi, Lamad Sabachthani. I can't believe this. If men turn away from me, will you also turn your face? Jesus expressed his pain when he was on the cross. He said, I thirst. You thought you would just be hanging there and say you are wasting your time. When it's time to die, just take my life. No. You are royalty. The purpose of that authority is to serve. No matter how great you are, no matter how blessed you are, no matter how transformed you are, days will come in your life when your humanity will have to find expression. Maybe you may lose a loved one and for the first time, you find yourself silent. Listen to me. When you find people in that state, do not say where is your God <clears throat> hold their hands and as you cry with them let them know that everything is going to be all right this is the definition of compassion the ability to be touched don't go to a place where people are mourning the dead and say where is the dead body <clears throat> don't act like that even if you want to raise the dead comfort those that mourn first are we blessed our humanity there are times when you may not be paid your salary four five months it is true that you're a man of faith but right now you look at your children's school fees you look at real issues before you and there are times you can go to the place of prayer and find yourself leaning on the window and saying God I don't know the name of what is under fire don't tell me you will not feel it when you hear that you've lost your loved one don't tell me you will not feel it when you find out that your church is gradually declining. Don't tell me you will not feel it when sickness is eating up your body. Ask Job. Job was a man who feared God and eschewed evil. But a time came he lost everything in one day. And then boils began to come out of his body. Even though Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But a time came job said god we need to talk and god respected his desire and came can i tell you this the god that we serve is a god that is mighty but he's compassionate as a leader if you are only a lion you are dangerous you must be a lion that serves and yet you can connect to the humanity of men this is the imbalance with the faith teaching listen this man standing before you is a man of faith but faith is not foolishness faith can cry we will destroy the body of christ if we strangle away the humanity of men just to show the excellency of the power of god 
that's why the bible left that scripture there jesus wept when you stand and watch billions of naira and dollars born because something happened to your company don't tell me you will just smile yes you will say be glorified but with tears in your eyes listen to me there are many people who have gone through things the making of a witness is a hard training there are times as a man of God you will be going through the same thing you are counseling others from and God will never speak to you about your own issue yet when they come here is the word of knowledge you are prophesying you are blessing people they are increasing and yet your life is not capturing that truth and the call to ministry mandates that you remain true to the call the face of a man there are times you do not lock your door to pray you lock your door and say father i am here and truly he comes once upon a time i think this is just a story to express a point i'm not sure it's a real story a man was caught up to heaven and he saw himself walking he was shown a you know footsteps and whilst he was going he could see his footsteps and the footsteps of jesus then he got to a point where he saw only the footsteps of one man and then he said jesus but you left me at this point and he said no that was the point i carried you the one footstep was me carrying you because at that point you gave up let me teach you something about jesus your jesus on his way to the cross i hope you know if jesus died on the ground he could not become seen the law is that you must die on a tree to be a cause he had bled to a point where he had no strength because the life of the flesh and then a time came he fell with the cross he was going to die on that ground there your jesus needed a man to help him reach the cross he was on his way to fulfill his own assignment and somewhere along the line even though he was the glorified christ he fell there a 33 year old man naked on the ground was about to give up and they called a young man called simon of cyrene they said please help him carry that cross jesus did not say no 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 no. it's my business let me finish it he said please i need that help and they carried it to the cross where he died there are times you will need help in your life even though you are great do not be afraid to be open for help financial help don't say i'm divine my supply comes from heaven yes sir there are times you just have to be honest please help me i'm in a face in my spiritual walk i am still in the school of the spirit and i am not ashamed there are many people who are sick they secretly go and swallow drugs and come out and say for five years i've not taken any drug because they are conscious of being a lion doctors are not a cost to the faith life they are a system of god's mercy if you are sick release your faith you release your faith and it looks like things are not happening the way you want please don't wait until your health deteriorates and you die be honest enough to go to the hospital while still in the school of the spirit god's ultimate is that we become fortified to a point that there may not be need for those things but whilst you are on that journey take advantage of the supplies that cater for your humanity there are people today who have died the death of fools identifying and admitting their humanity would have saved them trouble witnesses witnesses are not spirits of god they are men it is just that they are of god there are people today who in a bid to show the excellency of spirituality have destroyed themselves can i tell you this i'm not endorsing carelessness but the body of christ must be careful with this godlike expectation they have over men of god and leaders great men are men the greatest and the best of us is still a man there is and and i can tell you where that mistake came from it came from us men of god in a bid to show the excellency of the power of god 
we feel ashamed of our humanity to our peril if only you opened up your heart and let people know you needed help you will be surprised how many people will be willing to help you but when you let people know that you are God you have so close a relationship with him they will leave you there and you get punished for not being trained using this third face again the lion royalty and power then a call to service the calf but men will use you and strangle you I told you here that a man of God a father of faith in Enugu he called me to his office after his conference and he said apostle please be careful Africans kill their prophets he's not being sarcastic he's saying once people identify the grace of God upon your life they will suck you dry suck you dry there are many people who are backsliding today because of ministry they didn't have time for study again 30 invitations in one week and you keep working for God and stop working with God it is okay that when people call you and say what are you doing now are you praying or studying no I'm resting what are you doing I'm just having time with my family don't you love the kingdom again shut your phone from those those ignorant talk and focus on what God is giving you grace to do many many great people today focused on building things and they left their family they left the things that matter can I tell you this I have learned by experience that only three things really matter in this life when all the stakes are down number one your relationship with God number two family number three your assignment end of discussion there is nothing else that is worth dying for listen carefully your humanity was captured in the throne room you can be tired there are times you will need help yes you are a man of faith no matter how even if a nurse and a midwife no matter how professional she is when it is time for her to give birth she will need another midwife to also help her be careful when you reject the ministry of men accept and admit that you are human are we together now there are many people today who cannot pay their rent there are many people I'm not teaching laziness but I'm saying many people's breakthrough would come cheaply if only they would open up their hearts to say they are men how are you feeling today great and excellent why are you crying oh don't worry this is the day the Lord has made it's all right you are speaking faith but when you are with someone who can help you what is happening look I had a quarrel with my wife this morning can we stand in faith and agree ah man of God you wrote five books on marriage and this is what is happening no 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 listen I'm not saying this to be sarcastic you have to be very careful otherwise men will push you to a point where your life will become a disaster listen to my teaching why revivals die there is only one reason why revivals die the humanity of men Jesus wept Jesus was hungry there is a godlike expectation that people bring on leaders and it's wonderful we must rise to points where our lives are models enough but we must be careful in the midst of that we are men so you see a man driving his son to school and someone looks at him ah emoji you are driving your son to school and he says from today driver will drive my child after five years the child is closer to the driver than the father because he is doing ministry and the consciousness of being a lion will not allow him to connect with his child by the time the child becomes a teenager he calls his father uncle because he says you don't have a stake in my life you did not invest in that relationship is God helping us yes, sir. we are men we have needs you need 
money for school you need a house you need a sense of progress do not just spiritualize everything and turn it down there are times that even the great cry and when those moments come cry with honor someone lost a lot of money i think early this year or so and he called me he said apostle i cannot imagine what is the meaning of this the bible says the steps of a good man as a hey, please leave all that thing let me talk to you there is something called failing forward there is failure as an event and failure as a person are we together now if a plane is moving forward and you get up from your seat and go backward are you going backward that's how failure is while you are growing even though you left your seat in the plane the overall plane is still moving and you will eventually arrive at your destination the area where we need to address especially this humanity is the issue of sickness i can tell you this there is a theology that if we do not balance will destroy the body of christ i'm not teaching weakness i am a man of faith i've enjoyed the grace of god there are certain things you cannot pretend about with my kind of schedule I just returned from Port Harcourt. I have meetings back to back up until Thursday. So I'm standing here. I'm not pretending it to you. But let me tell you this. We have to be very honest. It is true that we are people of faith. But by the time you are 50 years, 60 years, biologically speaking, you may not have the kind of strength that you had when you were a teenager running around again. There is need to redefine the way you do ministry. But if all you know is being a lion, save Johnny. Do not let experience teach you. It can be a very bad teacher. Are we blessed? The face of the lion, royalty, dominion. The face of the calf, servanthood. A call to serve with humility and meekness. But whilst you serve, no when far becomes too far. It is okay to say, hold on, please let me rest i am a man being a man is good but like the three faces there is also a limit to it because your consciousness as a man many of you are happy now that i said i'm a man you are happy that i said we are humans so that when you don't pray you say that after all apostle said i'm a man you don't fast that level of carelessness will tell on your spiritual life in a way you are not prepared for. So there is a balance. The last face, the face of the flying eagle. The flying eagle means you are divine. And there, there is a system of restoration where you, it talks about the duality of your nature. It never said the eagle. It said the flying eagle. The eagle that lives both on land and in air. It reminds you that even though you are human, the presence of the Holy Spirit has created an advantage that you are natural, but you can be supernatural. Are we together now? Yes. It said that the eagle, when the eagle wants to renew its strength, it will rise to a high altitude when the feathers are old. I learned that from the book, The Spirit of Leadership by my greatly revered mentor in life and in death dr miles monroe that the eagle would rise to a high altitude and be there for a very long time it would defeather itself and shed off the old feather and survive the cold at that altitude until a new feather begins to come and then when it is fit it doesn't just fly it soars soaring means that it will study the current of the wind and it will follow it listen to me it is true that we are humans but god did not leave us to our humanity there is a divine component i will not leave you comfortless so he gave us the holy spirit in the midst of pain you can find strength in the midst of stress you can be renewed so it is not an endorsement to just be happy about your humanity and to leave it there the balance to it is that you are divine. It is this divine nature that made the patriarchs of old to stand even at the face of death. 
and even though naturally their humanity should sweep them with fear but they did not denounce christ an energy that the men who killed them could not explain where it came from the eagle they stood until death you read about the martyrdom of most of the apostles of the lamb some were turned upside down some were were hung and killed in transverse sessions and they stood can i tell you this if you realize that you are divine that even though i am a human yes this is the man joshua selman but there is his divine power that can come upon us it is with that power we can heal the sick it is that power that grants us the grace that even though we are humans we can comprehend truth at a level and a dimension that is not given to ordinary men the excellency of the power the workings of his grace in our lives will clearly show that even though we are humans we are divine this is why ordinary people can build supernatural things businesses ministries this is why although we are humans i can speak to you and say in the name of jesus may the spiritual climate over you change and it will change because i am not alone and i am not all human there is a divine component the bible calls it that treasure that is in earthen vessel so don't move around just saying i'm human and allow sickness to ravage you and allow failure to defeat you and allow the vicissitudes of life to beat you down there is an advantage that we have in this kingdom of light we are royalty kings and priests the lion we are servants serving nation and serving the kingdom with all our hearts we are humans we can go through the things that happen to men there are battles but we will never be defeated because there is the face of the flying eagle listen to me you want to be able to stand before god as an effective witness you must pass through this school of the spirit where you are taught how to be a lion royalty you are taught how to be a servant the calf you are taught how to maximize your humanity a man and then you are taught the reality of your oneness with the holy spirit that culminates to your divinity when you are done with this body of knowledge you are ready to be sent he can send you to the field and you will go and stand on a crusade ground and the first thing people see is your humanity and they look at you and say what is this it never well before people really got to know me the way they know me today um every time we travel to a region especially if that's my first time Usually there will be an array of protocol, different people waiting to receive Joshua Selman. And so when I arrive, most times I used to wear jeans and the polo, just listening with my earpiece, listening to worship or something. And as soon as we come down from the plane, you see the people looking around, where is he? Sometimes they come and meet my protocol. No, you see the one, they meet a few people. Then when they find out I'm the one, you can see the sheer disappointment on their face. This is what we were waiting for for two hours and then i smile back at them let's go to the crusade ground you are only seeing a man but i'm not only a man there is a flying eagle this gives you confidence so people don't bully you because of your humanity royalty service your humanity your divinity all of these dimensions must be captured in your life to present the holistic picture of the Christ. This is why the four living creatures stand before the throne. They reflect who God is. That he is royalty. He came to serve. He came as a man. But he is the Christ. Now look at your life and your area of training with the spirit you will find out that for many of us you've only been training allowing god to train you as lion you bully everybody you shout someone says look i think um uh, is it that your leg oh, no 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 don't talk don't talk to me like that i'm i'm, I'm a lion and there are people who would never accept any good thing i'm a servant God blesses them, they reject it and cast the blessing. They need it, but they reject it. They call their service 
humility and that may be true but eventually they find out that their humanity catches up with them is that true yes and then for those who are human find out that they are reduced from that realm of royalty and power and they become beggarly because they have allowed the elements the vicissitudes of life they have justified the fact that every failure is permitted in their life after all i am human so he brings you the balance that you are divine you are divine we will rise in your name I don't know you reign on now we will rise in your name I don't know you reign on now hallelujah now please very quickly let's discuss a few things we have to pray so you understand that in the making of believers there are things that you must pass through this is what you learn in the cave of adulam it's not an empty lecture it's a lecture that will move you from face to face this way you will be an effective witness whether in ministry in career whatever it is you can be a billionaire ceo and watch one of your staff crying and you don't look at them and say you don't cry in this corporation no because you were trained as a man you can say come she's surprised my boss that exalted man is now giving me audience because you were trained well you can be a ceo and one day you will come and meet your least staff the security man and say you know what i just came from my office to tell you happy birthday and the man wants to run away i can't believe this my ceo who is busy up there has the thoughtfulness to tell me happy birthday because you were trained and then just when he wants to trivialize you he sees an an entourage of people who come to remind him that that man who was a man is also a lion the lion the calf the man the eagle one more time the lion the calf the man the eagle let's do it for the last time the lion the calf the man so you carry this consciousness go back home and when you see someone who has remained a man for too long you tell him look i have cried with you but it's time to clean your tears the holy spirit did not leave us comfortless don't dwell in your humanity for too long it's time to rise and ascend and become an eagle When you see someone who continues to excuse failure in his life you can literally look at a believer and diagnose what is missing in his life immediately when you see someone with pride most likely you know what is missing now good students when you see a man of god bragging on stage and saying all kinds of things you know what to pray for for him now you don't look down on him but you can go back and say lord i'm seeing only a lie on here he has not learned that the purpose of honor and authority is for service when you see someone who is serving as if he would die you are seeing death near him you know what to tell him mr man rest rest when you see someone who is just carnal around speaking as if he's not born again all these faith people faith 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 we are humans a luther continua victoria is carter you say hey You've gone too far in this kingdom we are divine we are in every way supernatural listen to me this is this is this is this is a discipleship class building you to stature and balance so you can teach on faith this week and yet you are attending a burial next week and you don't feel guilty for being there people look at you and say ah, you are in this burial and he said well i was just passing and the holy ghost told no 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 you came for a burial because you are a responsible shepherd over people i have to move to something else now write this down please everybody our corporate mandate 
our corporate mandate we're dealing with part two now proper you won't believe that everything i'm doing is tying up part one part two we we have a corporate mandate please pay attention we have a corporate mandate there are two people the power of god is coming on right now i just saw light just leaving me no you don't have to stand just two people i just wanted to help them i just saw that light there is there is a season of dealing while i was talking about these four faces some of you you are still in that class that school of the spirit and god just wants to give you a witness this night that he's with you through these seasons of training two people the power of god i just saw come on them they are within this place in the name of jesus i decree and declare right now please help them by the anointing of the holy spirit fear not god is training you fear not god is building you isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says fear not i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine it says when you pass through the waters i will be with you through the rivers it will not consume you and when you walk through fire it will not consume you i bring you a word of comfort by the spirit pass through the school of the spirit there is a making that you are going to in the end of it you will become a witness indeed ordained god will legitimize your operation and you will do much for the kingdom our corporate mandate write this down please now please look up the word gospel means news good news a declaration and for you to understand our corporate mandate as believers you must understand the gospel very quickly there's a separate series on kingdom advance that we'll deal with later on but now just to touch on it we have the gospel is twofold please look up please look up let me your attention the gospel is twofold the first dimension of the gospel affects the hearts of men the second dimension of the gospel affects systems and structures the first dimension of the gospel is a message that saves the second dimension of the gospel is a value system that transforms we must embrace these two sides of the gospel to be able to transform society now i'm teaching you in this section the keys that make for transforming society for nation building can i tell you this this is not just a message for believers it's a message that captures in it the ingredients to change state to transform nations and to transform territories there is the dimension of the gospel as a message that saves the jurisdiction of that dimension of the gospel is the hearts of men the gospel as the message that saves what is it it is the revelation of the father's love listen carefully revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus that means the father commended his love towards mankind and creation by sending jesus jesus came as an expression of that love the love was targeted primarily to man being the zenith of his creation but then by extension to the entire creation are we together now the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of his son jesus the object of that love being man and then creation by extension to the intents that if they understand that sacrifice and they believe that report they become recipients of the life of god what the bible calls eternal life zoe so here's how the bible puts it for god so loved the world that he gave his then at that time he was his one and only begotten he's no longer his one and only begotten today he's the firstborn of we the begotten are we together now but at that time he gave his one and only begotten son to the end that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting this is important so that is the dimension of the gospel that saves by believing that message the message of the substitutionary sacrifice of christ his death his burial his resurrection you don't stop there his ascension and his exaltation the gospel of salvation does not stop with resurrection he did not just resurrect and went to the air 
he got to heaven performed his high priestly duty and he was enthroned and sat at the right hand of god the father that's his current position today so the journey starts with heaven the throne of god he left it and came as a baby passed through the womb of a virgin walked the earth for 30 years performed the ministry for three and a half years he died as an exchange and brought many sons to glory resurrected and is today seated when you believe that report you are a recipient of god's life you are a recipient of god's spirit are we together but for a very long time africa listen to me for a very long time this is the only dimension of the gospel that we have focused in the missionaries when they came in from the west they were sincere people I had the honor and the privilege a few weeks about two weeks ago to be at the first cathedral and the oldest cathedral in this nation i had the honor and the privilege of seeing the instruments that were used by bishop samuel ajayi crowder it was such a time to connect to history i had the honor of seeing his bishop chair that was 150 years old i'm not ignorant as far as church history is concerned by the grace of god i can tell you that the reason why our society is the way it is is because we paid attention to one side of the gospel and we did not bring that balance we paid attention to the message and we ignored the value system the message only affects the hearts of men it is the value system that affects society so we find out that men are saved but the society is not safe we have a corporate mandate a twofold mandate please write it down the first mandate that every true witness has the first mandate that every true witness has is to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men through this spiritual agency that the bible calls the gospel the first corporate mandate of every witness regardless geography is to establish the lordship of jesus christ across the hearts of men and the instrument that we use according to scripture to make that a reality is the preaching of the gospel of salvation how shall they hear except there be a preacher how can the preacher come except he be sent how beautiful are the feet of them that take good news we must be definite about evangelism another name for what you just wrote evangelism is the key to global harvest and by the grace of god for as long as there is breath in us we will see that in our lifetime that we bring many to the cross many to jesus they will come to the saving knowledge of jesus as a ceo as a man of god as a medical doctor as a family man you know that regardless the geography of your assignment we're coming there that ultimately your first corporate mandate as a witness as the universal church the ecclesia we have the assignment to ensure that christ is enthroned in the hearts of men this is why we continue to strive day and night to see that the gospel penetrates everywhere this is why people pay millions of naira to see that crusades are held this is why people make tracts this is why people send missionaries to the end that this mandate be achieved and in the name of jesus we will not fail not in our lifetime again i repeat in the name of jesus we will not fail the second corporate mandate that we have corporate mandate means regardless of what you are called to do this is ultimately where your attention should be number two to establish the lordship of jesus christ across every strata of human activities to establish the lordship of jesus christ across every strata of human activities that means to infiltrate systems 
and structures with the value system of the kingdom listen to me the value system of the kingdom does not profit christians alone there are people who are watching me now there are muslims there are non-christians there are other religions from across the world the gospel that we teach the truths that we communicate are not for christians they are for the entire creation of god are we together so there is the message that saves there is the value system that transforms every society is a reflection of the degree to which it has embraced the value system of the kingdom or otherwise so you can find a territory that has rejected the message but embrace the value system you see it in their technological advancement you see it in a very low crime rate you see that corruption is minimized these are all the value systems of the kingdom you don't have to be a christian to embrace the value system of the gospel it is the strategy that makes a society civil it is a strategy that that when you when you deploy the value system of the kingdom in leadership in governance in nation building you will build a dexterous and transformed society what is the tool that is used to achieve this influence write it down influence is the name given to the key that enthrones Christ within systems and structures. Evangelism is the key that enthrones Christ in the hearts of men. But influence is the strategy that enthrones Christ across systems and structures. Please write that word down and underline it. We're having some time to study. We're going to pray. What is influence? Two definitions very quickly. Please write down. Don't be tired. Don't be tired of writing. You are learning by knowledge shall the just be delivered. Hallelujah. Influence. Write it down please. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset, the beliefs and the convictions of a person and a territory. It's called influence. The capacity to have an effect on the mindset the beliefs and the convictions of a person and a territory is called influence second definition let me repeat the first very quickly I'm rushing because there is still an aspect we must touch this night by God's grace influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset the beliefs the convictions of a person and then a territory let me give you the second definition this is my definition of influence influence is the ability to compel men to buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty the ability to compel men all and sundry to buy into your convictions without the use of force or cruelty is called influence that means if i make you i sell my belief system by the dexterity of the results that that belief system commands it compels you to buy into my belief system i have influenced you listen to me christ will never be enthroned in our nation in africa across systems and structures if we reject influence for a very long time we have marketed a gospel of spirituality that is good but incomplete we have rejected influence to our peril so the average believer right now is under situations and circumstances territorially speaking read your bible and see the power of influence when the right people are the gatekeepers of systems and structures then christ can be enthroned notice my choice of words the right people not religious people not fanatics in fact not even just christians it takes more than a christian to transform society it takes a witness there are many christians who have assumed positions they use that badge of Christian and God there and continue to mess up because they have not embraced the value system 
of the kingdom we only trust witnesses in this kingdom a witness is one who has passed through this school of the spirit a witness is one who is governed by the fear of the lord conscience and posterity is god speaking to us please look at me i made up my mind as a man of god that by the grace of god i will never raise a people who just know god and love god by the grace of god i believe in influence every influential person is welcome to my life i don't drive them away i don't join this ignorant talk that people say this is how we, we drive people who should we should be there for we have driven politicians we have driven business people away we have driven captains of industry no one to mentor them to help them to correct them we leave them to continue to mess up and we complain the formation is always king priest prophet the captains of industry can go but behind them are priests and prophets that can speak the counsel of God not for the purpose of money until we restore the order of king priest prophet our society cannot be transformed please listen very carefully evangelism and influence therefore are the power keys that are responsible for enthroning christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities what happens when christ is enthroned in a territory number one his value systems are honored the people within that defined territory live by his value system It is a beautiful thing to see the value system of the kingdom honored. That way you will see that crime will reduce. Why? Because there is an effective management of resources. The leaders come. There are people who are governed by conscience, posterity, the fear of the Lord. Let me tell you this. Regardless of whether you are a Christian or not, you can embrace the value system of the kingdom. A value system that is referenced from scripture and you can defend it as it builds a nation this is not some fanatism about christians no we are advocates of truth we are passionate even about nation building so whilst on one hand we are committed to helping to see that christ is enthroned in the hearts of men we cannot be deaf and dumb and blind over the state of nation when jesus came everywhere the gospel was embraced the territory also grew the territory became a witness that the value system of the kingdom works when jesus walked upon the earth he began to teach what we call the beatitudes he gathered five thousand men regardless of their practice and he began to teach them the modus operandi of the kingdom the value system of the kingdom It is the value system of the kingdom that will restore honor and dignity and productivity. It is the value system of the kingdom that will cause young men to not trivialize the sacrifice of the elderly. It is the value system of the kingdom that will teach young people that money is not the only thing needed to respect people. The value system of the kingdom. Are we blessed? Is the value system of the kingdom that will make a young man to prepare to leave his father's house the moment he finds out he's responsible he must be prepared to get out of that place and go and be responsible not to be 40 50 years in his father's house complaining and stealing money and living there he has not embraced the value system of the kingdom because if you know god well and you understand his system god is a god of portions it is not god's desire that you serve forever as far as family and other things are concerned a time will come your portion will be given to you also is god helping us tonight please look up i presume that most of us here have allowed the gospel as the message that saves there is almost no one here who will necessarily fight the lordship of jesus there are thousands who are following by television thousands who are following online and most of them have come into that point where you believe that jesus is lord i congratulate you evangelism remains our pursuit in life 
and in death however the gospel as a message that saves works on the heart of men but it does not automatically transform society we need to reintroduce to the body of christ the correct concept of kingdom influence influence imagine with me if michael jackson ever said i love jesus i assure you that one statement would probably win more souls than many crusades put together why because he has sustained through mastery through competence through his results he has given himself a niche as far as the table of greatness is concerned and on the strength of that exalted platform there are many people who can buy into his ideologies dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline